So you may have noticed um, we are running a little for a different program this morning. Um, so this morning as we pray, we'll be praying for um, Vicki and Shimon as they travel to Chicago. Um, Vicki's daughter-in-law had a surgery this weekend and she needed to be there. So, um, so she is there and also we're praying for Brian Shaft who is home now from a surgery. Um, so that is our pianist and our backup pianist. So today you get a guitar player. Um, so you'll see me running around a little bit, so I appreciate your grace and your patience in all of this. Uh, I'll also say happy Labor Day weekend. It is a holiday weekend, and I know we've got lots of folks traveling, so I pray that you do get some time uh, to spend with family and time to relax uh, and think about what a wonderful place we live in. I wanted to invite you uh, to join us for dinner this evening here in the, um, in the, in the cafeteria here at 4 o'clock for a pasta dinner. And we're going to celebrate kind of the wrap-up of our Healing Change uh, program. And I'm very excited to announce that our total collection for the Healing Change program was $1,317. So, awesome. 
Um, so thank you, Perry Ann. I see you're here. So thank you for grabbing hold of that program and doing much more with it than I could have in little bits and pieces. So what a blessing uh, to be able to present that to Christine tonight. So please join us. We'll have um, lots of food. Just a reminder, we are uh, on week three of our Bible study. So you're welcome to join us. We have two groups at 10 a.m. For women and a 6 p.m. is an open group for all people. It doesn't matter if you weren't able to make the first couple of weeks. We invite you to go ahead uh, and join us anyway. Uh, and I have extra books. So um, one of the things we're learning from that study is more about spiritual gifts and the importance of spiritual gifts in our faith journey individually and also as a church. So at the recommendation of the study groups, I have put the spiritual guest survey on our website. So if you go to our website, there's a page that is called Faith Life Resources, and there's a, a full instruction manual and a link to a, a spiritual gift survey. I would encourage you to take time to visit that and fill out that survey and let me know what your results are, because that may help us plug you into a ministry uh, where you can serve the church and serve God in amazing ways that fill you and um, bring you great joy as, long as, as well as other people. Uh, a reminder that our quilt auction uh, does wrap up on the 10th of September. I believe our current high bid on our quilt auction is $600. Um, so if you do want to bid, uh, we've got a, I've got $700 is our highest bid right now in the quilt auction. So that's awesome. That will go towards our building fund. So we're grateful for all of the participation. You've got another week. Um, so please do go to our website. There's a link there. You can register your bid, and uh, we can try and see what happens with that. I don't know who our highest bidder is, but get ready. It's going to be a good week. Um, so with that being said, our, our quilt auction resources will go towards our building fund. I'm going to ask for your prayers as we gather in addition to us praying together because I've been called um, to meet not only with the developer this week, but also with our synod in Tampa on Tuesday to talk about the next steps for this project. So we're, we were looking for some assistance from the synod and they're going to gather. They've asked me to be there and help us uh, possibly move forward with that. So we will keep uh, that whole process, the synod council in our prayers as we um, consider what that would look like. We're, we're excited to be sharing the, the building with the cheer squads uh, this morning. So I don't know what that means, what will come of that, but be ready for anything. You know that. You know, if I say, give me a J, yeah, right? we, we can participate in that. Um, we are grateful. Uh, but if I was to have a show of hands, and this isn't an official vote, who would like to build a church here in Babcock Ranch? So uh, we've got some board members here. Are you counting? That's, that's a majority. So you've all officially voted. Uh, so I am so glad that you're here this morning. Again, I appreciate your patience as we kind of pivot as needed. Um, just to let uh, Brian and Vicki and Shimon know we love you. We miss you. We look forward to having you return. And thank you to our volunteers who uh, picked up a little extra slack this morning for me to help things get set up. So I'm going to invite you to stand this morning and say good morning to the beautiful people around you. Good morning, beautiful people. Everybody, while we're waiting for Pastor Max to put on his wireless microphone, I thought I wouldn't tell you, but I just changed my mind. Tuesday is also his birthday. He's going to be the big five one. So before you leave, greet him at the door, tell him happy birthday, and <laughs> give him a pinch to grow an inch.
Test, test, test. One, two, three. Who was with us when we were doing church in the field? Do you remember that? We didn't have all this crazy technology. We were all sweating constantly. God, we give you thanks for this day, and we understand that from time to time we need to make adjustments, uh, and we give you thanks for your grace and your love and your people as we gather in this way. Lord, prepare our hearts to receive you. Help us to surrender all of those things that are distracting us this morning. Help us to listen to you and hear you through the truth of your word that we will share here today, that we would carry that truth into the world and bring peace, love, and joy to a world who is so uh, in such desperate need of those things. It comes in such fullness through our relationship with you. So as we would gather today, we pray that the Spirit would fill us to give us courage and power to go out into the world. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to be seated, and I'd like all of our children to come forward this morning. Children? 
Anybody? Oh, we've got some children here. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Let's hear it for our children this morning. The best. The best. All the best. So good to see you. Welcome back. That's right. So good to see everybody this morning. I'm so glad that you're here. You are such an important part of what we do every day in the church. So thank you for being here. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And then we're going to talk a little bit about listening. Okay, let's pray. Jesus, we are so grateful that you walk with us each and every day, that you lead us along the way, that you encourage us along the way, that you have surrounded us by a community of people to love us and guide us and care for us. So be with us now as we hear your message, a message about listening. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Who of you would say you're a good listener? We've got some good listeners. Okay. Now, what, we've got some completely honest people, which is awesome. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I happen to know that I have something here that is a very good listener, and you're going to find this very strange, but I'm going to show you exactly. This ketchup packet is a very good listener. This ketchup packet listens to me no matter what I say, okay? And I'm going to give you an example, especially when this ketchup packet needs to go swimming. So I want to show you this. I know it's funny, right? So let's do this. I'm going to just, okay, Mr. Ketchup Packet, we're going to go in here, put you in there like that. This is where I always hope this works the way that it's supposed to work. So I'm going to put Mr. Ketchup Packet in there. Okay, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so there is a ketchup packet in this bottle of water. And it's sunk to the bottom, which isn't honestly what it was supposed to do when I first put it in the, in the container. I think if I really try and encourage this ketchup packet, maybe, just maybe, it will come to the top. Let's see. No, nope, that one doesn't want to cooperate. Let's try it again. <laughs> see, this has been this kind of day, so that's okay. I got a backup. So let's try this. That was a bad listening, right. So we're going to... Put this in here. We'll try this again. Too much. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So this ketchup packet. Maybe this is the good listener of the of the. You're wondering if this is right now. Okay. So here's what we're gonna try. So I told you that I have two ketchup packets. Obviously, one is not a good listener. Who said they weren't good listeners? Okay. Good. Awesome. Appreciate your honesty. I'm going to see if I, this ketchup packet will be a good listener to me, okay? All right, Mr. Ketchup Packet, we rehearsed this. I want you to go to the bottom of the bottle. Let's see if the ketchup packet listens. What? Go down to the bottom, okay? And, and just hang out there for a few minutes with your unlistening friend there. Don't get any bad advice from that person. Okay, Mr. Ketchup Packet, this is a good listener. I want you to rise back up to the top, Mr. Ketchup Packet. Go back up to the top. Okay. See? Oh, no. A good listener, right? Okay, Mr. Ketchup Packet, let's do something more tricky. Let's kind of go to the middle, and let's hang out in the middle of the bottle, and let's see if you can follow instructions. Nice and slow. Take your time. That's okay. And just hang out in the middle. How about that? Mr. Ketchup Packet is a good listener. Thank you. Okay, go back up to the top. You did a good job. You were going to talk later. Okay. <laughs> I want us to know what it means to be good listeners today. So I, how about this? I'm going to ask all of, uh, I'll ask Mrs. Shapton. I'm going to ask Mrs. Shapton, let's see with our good listener, Ketchup Packet, if you can get this Ketchup Packet to listen to you. Go ahead. Go down to the bottom, Ketchup Packet. Okay, go to the bottom, Ketchup Packet. To the bottom. <laughs> down here. But this ketchup packet is such a good listener. Maybe it just listens to me. Okay. Go to the bottom, ketchup packet. Okay. All right, go. You're done. I know. I have to pay extra for that. Okay. Here's what I want us to know in our lives of faith as we follow Jesus. There's a lot of people who want us to listen to them. And even though you say some of you are good listeners and some of you are bad listeners, it's important for us to know who to listen to, right? And one person I know that we can listen to and we can follow is Jesus. 
And where do we learn about Jesus? Where do we learn all of the teachings about Jesus? In the Bible, that's right. So when we read the Bible, it's like we're listening to Jesus teach us. And when we listen to Jesus, we do that extra important step and follow and do the things that Jesus has to do. We listen to Jesus. It's important for us to be a good listener as we're followers of Jesus, okay? All right, let's pray. If I told you... I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll show you. We'll talk about it. Yeah. This is Shaft and I'll we'll give you all the trade secrets. All right, let's pray. God, we are so grateful for these minds and hearts that gather here together. We pray for your hand of protection over these children, all of the children uh, here in Babcock Ranch. Uh, we ask that you would guide them and have your voice be clear in their hearts as they follow you. Always have them look to you and to follow you into the world because your voice is truth. So be with them. We give you thanks for them, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear it. (laughs) All right. Very good. So I know I already gave you the, the good news, but I just wanted to say again how grateful I am for for this project in the Healing Change Program. Christine will be here this afternoon to share more of the mission of Valerie's House. Uh, It is a program that we have kind of been engaged in for uh, probably close to three years. When we first moved here, I connected with Christine uh, and we started this program. So, uh, but it has not taken on a life like this until uh, Perry grabbed hold of it and shared it with the whole community. So this number is a reflection of just, I don't know, 50 or 60 change boxes that were out in the community of people sharing. So such a blessing to Valerie's house as these families who are dealing with grief, these children uh, who are dealing with grief get support that they need. So again, thank you for your generosity. We'll have lots of things like, you know, the things we do, the quilt um, that are fundraisers, not only for the church, but we support other uh, groups as well. So we're excited to present that uh, donation to Valerie's house. I'm going to invite our reader to come forward for this morning's reading. Thank you. It takes a village to raise a pastor. Good morning. Our first reading comes from the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Take what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Pursue hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be arrogant, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Our gospel reading comes from the gospel according to Matthew, the 16th chapter, verses 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed on the third day, be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God, forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, 
and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of the Father, and then will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming on his kingdom. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michael. I invite you to join me for a word of prayer. God of abundant grace and mercy, we give you thanks for the truth that we find in your word. We would ask that as we prepare our minds and hearts to receive what it is that we will hear today, that you help that path between the words spoken and the doorway of our heart to be clear and wide open, for those words to settle into and find a place in our heart, because our heart is the home that you ask for. So as we hear more about St. Peter today, and we hear more about some tools that we can use to be better followers of Jesus Christ, just like we did with the children in our listening, we pray that you give us courage and strength to take those extra next steps in our faith journey. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to share, to start our time together, uh, about a, a program that Sean and I used to watch. And the program uh, was directed and uh, was, was led by uh, an amazing woman named Ianla Van Zandt. Uh, Ianla Van Zandt not only is a television personality, uh, by trade she's a, a, criminal, uh, a criminal attorney, uh, she's a lawyer, she uh, is also an author, and she would call herself a relationship expert because Ianla, in this show that she used to produce, and it was produced from 2012 uh, to 2021, uh, the show was called Fix My Life. And what Ayanna would do is she would have families that were in crisis gather under one roof, the whole family together, and really walk through all of the different areas of trouble that this family, these families were, were experiencing and get to the bottom of what it was that was causing them to have a complete communication breakdown, even violence in some occasions. But she used this really important tool, and I want us to to be thinking about this today as we uh, read through our scripture and our message today. Uh, this is one of a couple tools that I want to share with you. And you may have heard this expression before, but I've gone so far as to call it the title of our sermon, and that is call a thing a thing. So Iana would sit these folks down and, and, and boil down the anger and the frustration and all of these issues and identify these, these problems. And she'd look them straight in the face. And this is what's so beautiful about her is she would look them straight in the face and just say, beloved, call a thing a thing. In other words, how often do we disguise the things that cause us so many issues in our life to be something that is not actually at the core of who we are or uh, things like fear and anger, all those things that derail us, not only in our faith journey, but in our relationships as well. So beloved, call a thing a thing. I want to use this today as we look at two readings, our reading from uh, the gospel according to Matthew, and then also our just amazingly powerful reading from Romans. I wish I would have thought to do a series, a month-long series on these two readings because there's so much to read uh, in this text today. It's very rich. But what we really get to the bottom of, what we really look to do in calling a thing a thing is getting to the truth of what it is we're hearing in God's Word. Because God's Word is truth. But how can we identify and lift out that truth? So we know that uh, uh, our friend St. Peter, in our reading for today, has an interaction with Jesus. So we're going to start with our reading from Matthew. So if you happen to have a, a copy of the scripture with you today, whether it's electronic or uh, in the text, I'm reading from the NRSV, but we'll start with Matthew's gospel. So as we begin with Matthew's gospel today, 
Let's just start at the beginning and understand a little bit more about where Jesus is in this reading. So starting at verse 21, we hear these words from Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes. From that time on, Jesus began. So what we're hearing in this very first sentence is a carry-on from what we just experienced last week. So if you remember last week's reading from Matthew, Peter had just made the greatest confession of all. A confession that we're called to make in our relationship with Jesus Christ. That is, Jesus Christ as Savior. Jesus Christ as Messiah. So we're going from that great confession to this interaction between Peter and Jesus. But we can really quickly read over this word. From that time on, Jesus began. What did Jesus begin? What we need to understand is this is the very first of three times that Jesus would present to the disciples, Jesus would present to his followers, the passion prediction. This is the first of three times that Jesus would tell his followers, I'm going to suffer and die at the hands of the religious leaders. I must. It is necessary. So why three times? Great question. Because these are disciples that are people just like you and me. And they push back. So as we begin to talk again about calling a thing a thing, when we think about Jesus Christ as Messiah, right away we hear in this interaction between Peter and Jesus, Jesus tells Peter that he must go and suffer at the hands of these people and die. It's necessary. These are Peter's words. He said, some say, uh, this is when uh, he's asking people in the community who Jesus says he is. So Jesus uh, gives this passion prediction, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. So Peter as a follower of Jesus Christ, decides to put his counselor hat on and give Jesus some advice, maybe a a wake-up call as, as to who he really is. Jesus says, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on the divine things, but on human things. See, this is what we need to hear in in this interaction between Peter and Jesus. Even after everything that Peter and the disciples had seen and heard, they still want a Jesus that fits what they want in Jesus. It's their Jesus that they want. This Jesus that would give them power to overcome their enemies. This Jesus that would put them at the top of the pecking order in the community with regards to the faith community and everything that was going on. That they would be the ones through Jesus, their Savior, that they wanted. They would become rulers in a sense, and Jesus would be the king. So right away, when we think about calling a thing a thing, they're not really calling Jesus Messiah their Savior. They're looking for the Jesus that fits into the mold that they want. And Jesus has this strong statement to Peter. Get behind me, Satan. The Greek word, diabolos, which actually means adversary. So an adversary, even more than an enemy, an adversary uh, adversary is an opponent in a conflict or dispute, and it is an ongoing opponent. Jesus says, you're not thinking straight. Oh, what that is. So Peter forgets that he is a disciple. Peter forgets that he is a follower of Jesus Christ and puts who he wants Jesus to be first in his mind. And we need to be reminded, and I'm going to repeat this through this message today, that as we look to change in our lives, it starts with the way we think. It starts with our thoughts. Then it changes our heart. And then it changes into action. The way we think, our heart, and then the things that we do. Jesus knows this about Peter. So Jesus responds with this bold statement that many of us have heard 
And it really shakes us to the core. But Jesus is not necessarily calling Peter Satan, but he is acknowledging that adversary of Jesus has gotten a hold of Peter's thoughts and redirected his thoughts. So what causes Peter to reject Jesus again? It's evil. Let's call a thing a thing. It's evil in Peter's life. And it's important for us to remember as we think of this process as become, becoming better followers of Jesus Christ as we move from thoughts to hearts to action that we too succumb to this process that our adversary uses in our lives. So how do we listen and let these words sink into our heart from our thoughts to our hearts to our action? I wanted to share another tool with you. So we've got this tool that Ianla teaches us about calling a thing a thing. I'm learning as I teach more, teach scripture more, that the Bible that we read, the translation of the Bible that we read is very important. I've met with people who struggle in their reading of scriptures only to find out that the translation that they're reading is just difficult to read. And we all take in information different. We all read words differently. We have different experience uh, with words. But what I want to do, and I shared this with you that today we read from the NRSV, I wanted to share another tool with you as you and I encourage you to study Scripture, to listen to God through Scripture. Because if we can't listen through what we read, it becomes a barrier for us. So I wanted to give you an opportunity or invite you to, to consider another type of reading. If you find a, a, a word or a phrase or a text that you, that you struggle with, another type of reading that you can go to. And we've used it before, and it's called the message. So the message is a paraphrase. So there's a difference between a translation and a paraphrase. So uh, it's important, and I'm going to encourage you, if you are struggling with the reading, this one especially, I encourage you to check out a different translation. Check out this, this paraphrase, the difference between the two. A translation uses the same words without adding or subtracting meaning. Looking to the words of the Greek, of the original text, where a paraphrase aims to explain the meaning using different words. And I'll tell it this way. I'll say we're going to look to the message for a reading that uses more contemporary language, language that you're familiar with. So I want to read for you this gospel reading from the message paraphrase. And the paraphrase was created by a scholar named Eugene Peterson. The whole Bible has been paraphrased. Listen to these words and you tell me if maybe... You listen, can hear better through this reading. Then Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem, submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders, be killed, and then on the third day, raised up alive. Peter took him in hand, protesting. Impossible, Master, Peter said. That can never happen. But Jesus didn't swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way to finding yourself, your true self. What kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself? What could you ever trade your soul for? Don't be in such a hurry to go into business for yourself. Before you know it, the Son of Man will arrive with all the splendor of his Father, accompanied by an army of angels. You'll get everything that you have coming to you, a personal gift. This isn't pie in the sky and by and by. Some of you standing here are going to see it take place. See the Son of Man in kingdom glory. So you hear the difference in the reading from the NRC, NRSV and this paraphrase. So yet another tool for us, if we reach a stumbling point as we study, as we learn to listen to God's word, to love God's word, to learn God's word, and more importantly, my friends, the action piece to live God's word. 
Let's move to Romans. And again, let's not forget what it means to call a thing a thing. So we've learned a couple tools now. This text from Romans teaches us about the Christian life. And it is, a, it is such a powerful reading for us. And again, one we could spend a lot of time with. It's a, wedding, uh, it's a verse that I've used in wedding text sometimes. But let me share it with you. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. This, my friends, is the Christian life. Jesus told the disciples in Matthew's gospel that he must suffer. We're going to hear in Romans text from the Apostle Paul that we too must suffer. We too must live a what is called cruciform life. A life understanding the meaning of the cross. What sacrifice means in our lives. Paul goes on to say in verse 14, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. We have to be reminded as we read this that we understand this is not easy. I don't know about you, but I have met many people in my life who I really struggle to take this position in representing who I know Jesus to be in my life, representing what a cruciform life is, what it means to have a life that is constantly a reminder of what Jesus has done for us. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Jesus is telling us that even in our suffering, we are called to serve God with joy, not to hesitate, not to wait. The cross reminds us and teaches us of Jesus' death. Yes, but also the cross reveals to us daily the glory of God. Some of that glory is out in the wide open. We live in this beautiful place. Some of God, God's glory is just like in our face. But I'm here to tell you that some of God's glory is hidden. And that sounds strange, but I have a secret. I can tell you where to find it. You can find God's glory, this hidden glory, people. I can't tell you the amount of time that I've spent with People who I visit who are housebound, people who are ill, and loved ones, God's glory shines through in those moments. And they appear on the outside as moments of great suffering. In fact, people will say to me, that must be the worst part of your job, Pastor. But I would tell you, loved ones, it is the best part of my job. Meeting people in those times, in those spaces, and seeing the glory of God revealed. And each and every one of you has that same opportunity. So what does it mean in, in both of these readings? What does it mean to call a thing a thing? As we read through more into Paul's readings, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it's possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Never avenge yourselves. If we're to sit here at this text and apply the first tool that we learned, let's call a thing a thing, what Paul is talking about is generosity. What Paul is talking about is how we live our lives, we share the gifts of God with others, we share our time with those who are suffering, this is a text that is about our generosity in our Christian life. And through that generosity, again, God's glory is revealed. But there's more. And both of these texts, when we look at both of these texts side by side, there's one thing that they both have in common. And Peter made the mistake in his conversation with Jesus, that little bit of advice that he gave Jesus. And Paul tells us here, both of these are about the Christian identity. See, what, what Peter had forgotten is who Christ was and who Christ is to us. Last part, verse 20. This should get your attention. Of speaking of vengeance, of vengeance. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. Give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. So we hear about this generosity even to our enemies, 
But doesn't this sound a lot like revenge? Like vengeance? Well, here's the secret, friends. We're not the ones pouring the burning hot coals on the heads of those enemies. We're giving a space for God to do what God does. But how quickly suffering is going to refine our faith in so many ways. Back to this person that I spoke of in the beginning, Yanla Van Zandt, as I studied more about her kind of in remembering the show that we would watch, I learned something terrible and tragic about her life as of late. I learned about Ianla that in 2003 she lost her oldest daughter to cancer. And then I learned in July of 2023 she also lost her youngest daughter. But as I followed Ianla's presence in social media, in YouTube, she is a spiritual leader and part of her show that really drew us in is that she was always referencing God's power through tragedy and struggle. And she showed through her own personal life what it meant to become stronger through the suffering that she had experienced. Still leading people spiritually, still serving people to heal relationships, but friends, it's a reminder that it is not easy. So God is extending an invitation and has revealed through the truth of the word that we read, through the words that we read, through Jesus, what a full life is. And I want to end with this. We hear this expression in Bad Pack Ranch, live a better life. What we read in Jesus' teaching is that living a better life does not mean what we add on top of what we already have. God of grace and mercy, we, we thank you for the truth that we find in your word, but that truth reveals that for us as your followers, we are in need so often of releasing and surrendering so much of what we hold dear in our lives. Our Christian identity is so dependent upon trusting in you fully on this path with the words of truth that we read, being good listeners, being good followers, living into your truth, loving your word, learning your word. So Lord, as we prepare ourselves for this time where we gather around your table, it is a time for us to reflect on who you are in our lives, that we are your people, that we are all connected in Christ, that our Christian identity goes before us. So, Lord, help us to trust wholly in you as we face the challenges of life, as we face suffering. Remind us, Lord, that you are with us. You walk with us and you strengthen us. So prepare our hearts and minds now, Lord. We ask this in your mighty and powerful name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. So as we move forward in our worship together. We take time together for a moment of confession and forgiveness, so I invite you to join me as we do that here and now, and the responses will be on the screen for you. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. For self-centered living and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, Lord, have mercy on us. For longing to have what is not ours and for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves, Lord, have mercy on us. For misuse of human relationships and unwillingness to see the image of God in others, Lord, have mercy on us. For jealousies that divide families and nations and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, Lord, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God and for carelessness with the fruits of creation, Lord, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, 
Lord, have mercy on us. For idleness and witnessing to Jesus Christ and for squandering the gifts of love and grace, Lord, have mercy on us. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in our own sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And now, dear friends, for each and every one of you, peace be with you. And I invite you to share that peace with the people around you. Peace be with you, beloved. As we prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, I always take the time, knowing that we have guests that are with us today, to remind you that you are welcome to God's table. This is God's table for all of God's people. So you're invited to join us for communion. As the ushers bring you forward, you'll have an opportunity to receive a bread, which is either regular bread, and I'm going to say extra gluten-y bread, or a gluten-free. So if that's something you need, please just uh, ask the, the communion attendance for that. You'll have an opportunity to receive uh, either a clear liquid, which is grape juice, or a burgundy liquid, which is wine. So as we prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, the way that we do that is we sing together in Christ alone. Now I'll share with you too, we've kind of revised our, our route a little bit this morning, uh, and there will be somebody giving uh, gluten-free at the stations, but if you would like gluten-free, Please come to this station here on this side of the two, uh, and the gluten-free will be, will be there for you. All right? We can do this together, everybody. our Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. We're taking applications just so you know. <laughs> Yeah. 
Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the complete forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. All right, we're going to sing our first communion song, which is Here I Am to Worship.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me for our closing prayer. Almighty God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, we give you thanks for this day. This time that we can come together and give thanks and praise for your name, for the gifts that you give us. Now, God, we ask that you, through the truth of your word, would refine us in the way that we need to be refined. And though we know that may mean suffering from time to time, Lord, we know that you walk with us and that there is purpose in our pain. Lord, help us to always listen for you, not to rebuke you as Peter did, but to keep our eyes focused on you, that through what we think, our heart would be transformed and that we would live a life of action in our faith. Lord, we pray that you would extend a hand of protection over those who are not with us today. We know that there are some in our families and friends that are in need of an extra measure of your healing touch. Lord, this morning, as we gather, we pray for the Andrews family, for the Hall family, for Ray and Tina, for Roger and Sheila. We pray for Lori and Brian, for Barb and Mary. We pray for Ralph. We pray for Sarah. 
and Arga. We pray for all of those still recovering from the wildfires in Hawaii and all of those who were affected by our recent storm. We pray for Jen and Randy, for Dan and Bob, and Lord, we pray for the Florida Bahamas Synod Council. Be with this church as we continue to grow, Lord. Guide us. Help us to hear your voice. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you to receive this sending blessing. As you go your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way. Behind you to encourage you along the way. Above you to watch over you and care for you. And beside you to be your very best friend. And may God always go within you to give you his peace and his joy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now our closing song. <laughs> God so loved.
want to thank you all for being here. We look forward to hopefully seeing some of you this afternoon at 4 p.m. right here in the cafe for a pasta. Come on, a pasta dinner. It's not going to cost just you come. anything. Don't come sign on up. down just and check come. it out. And I also wanted to just say, uh, as I do, if you have not heard it from anybody else today, I love you. This pastor loves you so much. What we are doing here together is amazing work, and I'm grateful for your part in it. So now, oh, Alan is waving one of our T-shirts. Um, we have new T-shirts. We've got polos, and I think we've got license plate holders also. So check that out. Church merch just for you. So now let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. Love you too, brothers.